Good morning, podcast world. It is 10-25-2020. That's October 25th, 2020. And it's 8 a.m. I'm looking forward to some morning motivation. And today I'm going to talk about the presidential election that just took place. The last one before the upcoming election of 2020. All I can tell you is get out there and vote. Uh, Trump or Biden... Republican, Democrat, red or blue, uh, all of that. Whatever you're looking towards getting out of this, uh, hopefully you get it. Now, uh, all the debates, I I only half watched it because they were kind of trash. And the vice president election was interesting because <laughs> people could not stop talking about the fly that landed on Pence's head. And the thing they kept saying about it was... Flies only land on things that don't smell good. <laughs> Just think about it like that. So they were saying like he must have really stuck up a storm for that fly to continuously want to buzz and land on his head that way. And then in the presidential election, um, the presidential debate, you have they said that they're going to cut the mics off. They did not. Boy, so even these people that's controlling the debate are lying to you. Why did, is there ever a point in time that you feel like they are so lying to me? Like, they know that they're not going to have a cure. They know that they're not going to have a cure in time for the election. They know that they're probably not trying to pass this money, the stimulus money out until right before the election to gain votes. Like, they know. They have uh, an ace in the hole is how they feel. They feel like the stuff that they're doing is a strategy to win this election. And for them to be uh, win the election, it's like more money in the bank. No matter what you think, it's always about the green. It's always about the money. It's always about how is this going to benefit me? You know, I don't ever feel like in politics that they are just honestly a guy trying to help us, us bottom feeders, us poor folk, us folks who um, are in the recession, in the front line of the recession, that don't have a job or who aren't able to work because of the pandemic or for whatever reason is going on, you know, that then at this point, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow because there's a COVID-19. Next year, you have (laughs) COVID-20. All right, what's going on? It seems like every census year, every 10 years, it's every decade it seems like every year that there's an election especially there's always a bunch of um, misdirection going on and you never really know what's going to happen until well until January 21st because that's when the uh, powers trade over so until then until the inauguration you're still stuck with the guy that's doing you wrong you know so if if things don't go Trump's way, I don't feel I feel like he's going to be uh, one of those kids that say, "Give me my ball, I'm going home." And everybody knowing that everyone at the playground is playing with this basketball, but it's his basketball. He's going to take up his ball and leave. You know, he's not going to give a crap about us. He's not going to care about who's still playing the game. He's only going to be concerned about what's his and what he's supposed to get out of it. And Hey, tough titty is how they're gonna do it. So, I, I feel that that's what's gonna happen. I feel like if if Trump and even if Trump does get his way, it's gonna be like, well, you didn't believe in me. You didn't say that I think that I can win this. And I told you, I told you what I was gonna do, or I told you in my tweets what I was gonna have, or what's gonna happen. You know, you, 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 you know, I barely won. Just like when he went to uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, and was saying I was so far up in the polls earlier this year before the pandemic <clears throat> that I had no plans of coming to Pennsylvania. I had this thing won, but now I'm not so sure. As you can see that right there, I mean, that's honesty. I give it that, but it's not the right kind of honesty. It's like saying, I only care about your vote. Vote me F you. That's how it seems. So, uh, I will feel better once the stimulus check the stimulus package is 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 released and passed, and people are, you know, they, 
they put a band aid on a, 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 a gaping artery or a wound and thinking that's going to be doing something when it's really not. I mean, it, like I said, for some people who cashed out on the first part of the season with the stimulus, I'm like, I didn't even know that it was a thing, you know? I wasn't in the know to know that people were getting this extra money, the extra $600 or whatever, and I was just like, wow, that's that's good for those people who are getting it, you know? So, I just feel like right now, due to the season, I, I can put it out there, weather, holiday season coming up, this coming up season is considered depression season. Like, holiday season is always depressing for everyone, you know? Everyone, especially if you don't have family, maybe you're homeless, maybe you're a a war veteran who ended it, that slipped through the system, ended on the streets, or whatever the case is, you know? Maybe you have an addiction, alcohol, drugs, gambling, sex, whatever the case may be. Like, Whatever reason that you slipped through the cracks and you ended up on the streets and the things going, your your life is going the way it's going. I'm sorry, I I don't understand it. I've never, I have family, you know, and if I didn't have family, I don't know where I would be to this day if it wasn't for the family that's held me strong. You know, like when people be like, oh, I lost my mother. I don't I don't know that feeling right now, you know. So thank God, you know. So. I'm sorry to all those who have gone through whatever they're going through. And just hopefully that the choices that the government makes supports and helps you to get back on your feet. If you've been dealing with your high rent somewhere in California or (laughs) somewhere in Chicago or uh, somewhere in New York or somewhere in Florida, anywhere in Florida for that matter, or California. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm in Texas and it's a struggle here, and we have some of the best real estate in the country. Like, when, when, when I have friends that are in college that used to come to Texas or whatever and see how the prices were different, like in California, gas prices for a regular unleaded, it could go up to five dollars a gallon i've seen it with my own eyes i've taken pictures of it that's why a lot of people don't drive cars that's why it's cheaper to take the bus why would i not take the bus if i had to pay five dollars a gallon and my car is only giving me about 13 14 miles a gallon you know hey if you got a hybrid or something it might be giving you 20 something miles a gallon but either way that's still like think about that that was like a lot and then if you don't have a good paying career or job or anything like you stuck like i i don't i couldn't i couldn't live in california unless i was rich i always had this thing thinking if you stayed in california oh you must got money (laughs) because that's hollywood you know that's that's the first thing you think of when you hear of hollywood or if you're really historical you think of the gold rush or you think of the golden gate bridge you know you feel like if someone says they're from san francisco uh you're thinking like oh man these people gotta be rich or if you think of someone from hollywood or or whatever you think like all these people are rich and nobody ever really uh talks about san diego and i hear it's like one of the better cities to live in i hear good things about san diego it's hey, it's got um some of the same amenities that you get from the other cities but it's just I hear they're like nicer there or something I don't know and I've never been to San Diego I have been to um, uh, uh, the Bay Area and the Los Angeles area so it's just they're different from what I'm used to like I said here in Texas you get a lot of people waving at you for no reason and for people in California like it's a you know a, a mug reflex to be like you know, what they waving at you know it's not they're not used to the southern culture southern hospitality thing so either way I'm not really sure how this thing is going to swing out but I tell people all the time I'm a thousand percent sure that the Republicans are going to win that Trump is going to win and you know 
even though you sit there and you talk about a time for change, it's always harder to fight to get on top when you're the bottom guy. You know, it's always harder to get a person out of office than to to stay in office. Like once you once you win your first term, um, it's usually just like, oh, you've seen what I can do. Boom, roll over and to the next term. You know, like it'd be different if someone else was in place and then Trump came along, then you'd be like, I don't know, you know, we'll probably just keep the same guy that we got, you know, or if it was Hillary, you know, uh, they still would probably vote her out because she's a woman. I don't feel like, and that's the main reason that I feel like that, that they messed up because most countries don't even want women in power, all right? Most it's still people, it's still radicalists out there in the U.S. that feel like women should not be in authority. Women should not be um, head of churches or, you know, like we are, um, we are the men, you know what I'm saying? feel like so they're, still, they're still battling um, the fact that a lot of, there's people out there that don't want women in the military as far as like especially to go see like actual action going to war and stuff like that these are these are the things that we still deal with and will probably forever deal with it's not it didn't seem like it's gonna change um you had the woman suffrage and then you've had the whole uh liberation of women burn our bras you know like back in like the 70s or whatever so you know every every what 50 years, I guess, which, let's see, yeah, every 50 years or whatever, which is, this is in that, that range to where it seems like it's something, uh, for the women about to pop off, so, uh, just something to expect, especially if, um, Camilla Harris is, uh, becomes the vice president, I feel like it'll be a lot more because this is the thing I didn't understand uh, from the get-go when Trump first got elected. After the whole the uh, conversation uh, that took place on his bus, and, and I just I was calling him uh, President P Grabber, you know, uh, girl, look out, ladies, you know, he's gonna grab your your uh, JJ, you know. So he was pretty, like, I heard, I think it was, you know, uh, I don't know if Dave Chappelle or whoever. President Pussy Grabber, you know. I, I know they said it on, uh, I think it was American Dad or something. Either way, I know that the, the jokes have been made, and I've even seen it to where um, when they're like giving out awards or he's standing by uh, little girls, they be afraid of him. I would, I'd be afraid of him too, you know, based off some of the comments and statements he's made. But, like you said, when you're. Uh, when you're famous and you're rich and you're powerful, you're president or whatever, you pretty much do what you want, you know? You know? Um, <laughs> like, I know Family Guy made fun of it. <laughs> That's where I, uh, I didn't, I, like, I heard about it and then I seen them do the joke, uh, talking about some locker room talk you know, and when he was talking on his bus or whatever, it got recorded, and that's where it all came from. And I didn't, I, I was like, that's real. some people were like, that's a real conversation, you know. And that came out well on before the actual election hit back in 2016. So I was like, I can't believe that they voted for this guy. It's like saying that you, no one that voted for him has any respect for women, and. I, I have nothing to say either for or against that because if that's the way you feel, that's just the way you feel, you know? Like you literally have no respect for women, especially coming her out of out of out of Barack's of Barack's term and his two terms and having two daughters growing up in the White House. And now look at them. As beautiful as ever. Having a beautiful wife like Michelle, strong beautiful wife i feel like michelle could do anything and like if they start talking about it right now michelle 2024 she's already won because of who she is like her character her integrity her 
just you know her strength everything about her is like you are you are winning if you find a woman like that you know you is she is like when people be like oh man they uh they talk about um at one point they was talking about back in the day she was like oprah and you know they talk about beyonce and you know all of this they they all these uh, key factors or whatever are are powerful, beautiful women who, you know, people have supported throughout the years. But I feel like Michelle is hands down it, you know? I feel like over time, uh, like again, her, her daughter basically grew up in the White House and um, over the next so many years, there'll be um, you know, sought after, I guess is the word I'll use, and whoever uh, is lucky to, to let me say, marry them, uh, date them, marry them, or whatever, it's, you gotta be looking like, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, you know what I'm saying? Your mama is Michelle, so I know that you have good home training. I know that you grew up a certain way compared to what a lot of people portray us to be or a lot of people are used to getting you getting the best of both worlds you know and yeah I mean I can't say that about some of the past presidents like Bush's daughters I can't I can't say that you know I can't say that about Clinton's daughter you know what I'm saying I can't say that I, I can't say that about uh, well I'm gonna just go that far back cause uh, that's when I kinda first started while following politics um Clinton and I the reason I first started following politics was like Animaniacs I mean by that point in time um I was in social studies so I didn't I mean I it's, it's just a matter of um uh, age you know, it's a matter of uh, what you're being taught at a certain age. So, like my sixth grade year, they had a like a mock election, and they were asking. And my social studies teacher at the time was wanting to know who people would vote for, and you know, there was there's a, there's another. It was a black guy, Republican. Alan Keyes, he's probably still in politics. He's probably still out there somewhere. And people were voting for him. Didn't know anything about him. The fact that he was black. So I know that that's a factor and I understood, you know, back then. But I still voted for uh, Bill Clinton back then because I felt like he was the truth. He was really like, he did a good job, you know. Regardless of what was happening in the uh, Oval, little oil in the Oval, regardless of what was happening or whatever at that point in time, but still, in my world, made him so much cooler. <laughs> I don't care what nobody says. Like, Democratic presidents are so much cooler. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, you're Kennedy. <laughs> like, and I, I, and I, and it wasn't until college that my favorite president popped on the scene that I was aware of and that was Roosevelt. FDR. And his slogan was a chicken in every pot. And I gotta say, if a president were to say that right now, I'd vote for him. That is like the coolest thing, especially you, you gotta look at what was happening at the time. That was a time of during the Great Depression where that nobody was getting food, nobody was eating, you know. They had like soup lines and, and, and chow lines and you know, and like war was going on and, and all of this stuff was happening. Like it was at that time or whatever, you know, the Holocaust was taking place at the time. So you have to think about what was going on in the world to where uh, the phrase a chicken in every pot was so empowered like so such such a had such an impact and 
I'll say it like this. The last thing is, he was a cripple. He he, he was in a wheelchair, you know? And that right there lets you know, like, that's a powerful thing to think about. If this guy who can, couldn't really walk can run the country so well, what can you do if it's in your hands? And, you know, some, some years later, that's exactly what we got called for. What can you do for our country, JFK? And don't think about what your country can do for you. What can you do for your country? You know, powerful words, democratic words, something to think about. All right. Well, it's getting a little late, so early, whatever. <laughs> Time's running. I'm going to leave y'all with this. Just check out the uh, links down below. Subscribe to all the things that I have, like my YouTube channel. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all of that. And don't forget to get out and vote. I mean, it doesn't really matter who you vote for. I personally don't feel like, um, you know, our vote really counts. But, you know, it's your right at the end of the day. And they say that if you don't, you voice your opinion then you have nothing to say when your person doesn't win or changes are made. So I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for listening to my podcast and see y'all on the next one. Hello, YouTube world. Welcome to my channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I drop hot content like this and stay tuned for the next video.